Hey guys, Josh here and in today's video I'm going to be doing a review of Staxel and the way I'm going to be doing this review is I'll just go through one normal day in game. We're currently on the third day of summer so I've been playing for a little bit more than one season. And while I go through my day, you guys will be able to get a good idea of the gameplay loop and I'll tell you guys what I like and what I dislike about this game. And hopefully by the end of this video, you can make a decision whether you want to get this game or not. Just for more context before we start, Staxel came out on Steam in early access in January 2018. I did play a little bit at that time, but I recently came back to the game about a week ago. And of course, it's now the full version. And also on September 23rd, 2021, the game came out on Nintendo Switch. So basically, currently, there's two versions of the game. If you have the Steam version, you'll have access to both. But there's the original version and the CE version. And the CE version is basically the game rewritten from scratch with a different UI and some controls are different as well. The graphics are quite different too. So what I'm going to do at the end of this video, so I'm going to go through one day on the original version and then I'm going to play a little bit on the CE version so you guys can see what it looks like because just keep in mind that the Switch version is the CE version of this game. Uh, but with that being said, let's just get started. So as I said, currently is the third day of summer and if you don't know what Staxel is, basically uh, to describe it very easily it would be pretty much like a mix between Minecraft and Story of Seasons. So of course it's a voxel based game. So it's all squares just like in Minecraft and you can also build anywhere you'd like. But there's also tons of crops and farming. So recently I've planted all summer crops. There are also a few crops that grow in multiple seasons. So I've got cucumbers here that I've planted in spring but they still produce cucumbers. There are also fruit trees in this game so I'm growing banana trees. Here I've got a peach tree and this one, I'm not too sure, I don't remember. So here I'm gonna have all of my fruit trees and there are also some bushes. So there's like raspberries, strawberries and all of that, but I didn't buy any bushes yet. And there are also watermelons. So some crops have different size requirements. So as you can see, the watermelons are bigger. So I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, but anyway, so the watering is pretty uh, straight far is pretty quick so I think for the watermelons you just need to water like one square like this oh and when you run out of water just like in any other farming sims you just gotta fill up your watering can like here and what I like about the farming in this game is that the watering is so fast so usually I can water all of my crops in just a matter of a few seconds which is good because sometimes in these games we all know that it can be a little bit tedious sometimes to water the crops. You don't have to water the trees. And there are also sprinklers in this game. Um, so if you want to automate the process, you can do that. But things can get a little bit pricey. Uh, so I didn't buy any sprinklers yet. And of course, there are also animals. So I've got a little dog here. So quite early in the game, you'll get a choice between a dog and a cat. And they also have the little dog house. And I think if you feed them, they can bring you some gifts. Uh, I don't have, I'm running short on food. So I'm going to show you how you can buy food a little bit later. And here I've got a cow. And so you just put the food here. And then every day you can get milk. So you just need to make sure you got your milker. And as you can see, my inventory is quite small, so I think you can upgrade your inventory a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna run out of space quite often in this game. So you can milk the cow just like this and you get one milk. So that's very quick, very easy. And here I've got a chicken coop. So actually in this game, um, they're gonna ask you to build some buildings. So I had to build uh, this barn from scratch. Basically, you have a lot of freedom in how you want to do it. You just need to make sure it has a roof and some specific items. And then they told me to build a chicken coop. So I built this. But what I didn't realize is that actually uh, the chicken coop is just this. So you don't need to build like a whole building. So this <laughs> building is kind of useless. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But anyway, I've got one chicken here. And they lay an egg every day. And I'm not too sure... By the way, when you pet your <laughs> dog, they're going to follow you around, which is super cute. Uh, so I don't think I got my egg. Uh, so you're supposed to get one egg every day, but sometimes it can be a bit tricky to find. But no big deal. And also one more thing you can get is honey. 
so to get honey you need to get a wild queen bee and then you buy a little apiary and then honey is available but the bees are grumpy so what you gotta do is you need a smoker and you need an empty jar and one thing I like is that uh, as I said your inventory is always gonna be full but you can change your toolbar with these arrows right here so you can easily access other items in your inventory so you just gotta smoke them like this and then you use your jar to get a honey and then in a few days in three days they're gonna make more honey so that's a good way to make some money so yeah every day I get some milk egg honey uh, and then some crops and then you don't get this at the beginning of the game but to sell your items you got a little shipping box right here and every day you're gonna get your money the next day so uh, you just put stuff in here so I've got also my cucumber like this and I've got my milk right here so the farming is quite simple and I like this little system to ship stuff if you do have a lot of things to ship it's gonna take some time especially until you get this and here you've got a catalog which is nice it allows you to pretty much order anything that you've encountered in the game all of the different items there's a huge catalog so uh, you just order something and the next day it's gonna show up so um, that's pretty convenient so one thing to know about Staxel that makes it quite different from Minecraft is that there is a story and there are quests so right now there are a few things I gotta do so I gotta build a museum which is gonna be where I can show off all the different fish and bugs that I've got and there's some fossils as well so I need to build a museum and I also need to build a house for a new villager that wants to move in so when you want to build a house they just give you a post box and you put down the post box and then they tell you all the requirements for the house so this one I need roof I need bed doors tables fridge counter sofa bathtub sink toilet like there's there's really a lot of requirements and so that's the house I started building for this person I tried to match it with the mailbox as much as I could and that's the inside so it's <laughs> very unfinished and the reason why it's taking me oh there's some flies so you've got a little bug net you can catch bugs like this and that's one very good way of making money especially early in game when you don't have um, any crops ready or anything like that and these are the queen bees so in your little apiaries that's what you're gonna have to put to start making honey but yeah so one of my big gripe with this game which is a little bit sad because as you would expect from a game like this uh one thing i really liked with minecraft was building things uh it was a lot of fun it was very intuitive and yeah that was one of my favorite part of the game and i was really hyped for this game i was really excited because it's kind of like minecraft but with a story and quest so they tell you to build a house they tell you to build a museum so it should be exciting however i've been struggling so much with the building one of the reasons for this is that every block is kind of like a specific block so you know like in minecraft you could have like one block that you can use for the floor and you could use it for the walls as well and then you've got stairs that you could use for either like actual stairs or to make a roof with it but in this game there are different types of blocks so if you were to use a wall block to put on your floor it would look kind of off well I'm gonna show it to you right now it wouldn't be the same height so it would just look kind of odd and the same thing here that's a floor thing so if I try to make a wall with this like you can't really make walls with these right so every block has like a specific function so this one kind of sticks out and like it just doesn't look good so there's not as much freedom as like what kind of block you want to use where but my biggest gripe with the building is definitely how you just keep falling off the building so you know how in minecraft you could hold down the button on the computer that's shift and you it would prevent you from falling down right so if you press shift in this game you do walk a little bit slower and it helps a little bit but you will still fall so uh, I did stream this game the other day and I was building my barn and I don't know how many times I fell from that roof and it doesn't even look good right it looks horrible um, but yeah I just kept falling off the roof 
So that's one thing that's a little bit annoying. So I really do need to finish this house. And like there's so many, uh, as you can see, there's so many uh, different furniture I need. So let's see, like there's a fridge and a table and there's a lot of stuff that I need if I want this new person to move into town. So if you come here, there's the marketplace. So every day you've got different merchants. So this one sells animals and like animal stuff. So you've got the food. I need to buy pet food, so let's buy that. Cow, 15. So all of the animals are really expensive. So I don't have any pig yet because that's 10,000. Sheep, 10,000 as well. Actually, my chicken and my cow, I got them for free. So you get them pretty early in the game. And here you've got the furniture. So some furniture is not too expensive. Um, but yeah, there's quite a big selection. So this changes every day. That's a small selection today, but every day it changes. So just got to make sure you come here every day. So this person's going to need a toilet. So I'm going to make sure I buy that for them. Here you've got some clothing and here you've got some seeds. And if you want to sell stuff. So as you saw near my farm, I do have a shipping bin. Uh, but before that, before you unlock that shipping bin, you have to sell things one by one like this. So you just place them like this and you sell them. So let me tell you that this does get tedious if you have lots of things to sell, um, especially sometimes if you go catch butterflies or some bugs, you're going to have like tons of <laughs> different things. So it's just going to take a long time. The good thing with this is that you get the money instantly, whereas if you put things in your shipping box, uh, it's not going to be instant. You're just going to get the money the next day. So that's how this little market works. And also a bit later in game, you unlock this area. And this shop uses star bits. So star bits is another currency. And you find these little star bits just somewhere around the map. They're going to be kind of sparkling and you can buy some stuff um, with these. So usually stuff here is pretty cheap. So I need to get a refrigerator. So I'm going to buy this one for that person for that new house. And that's going to be that for now. And also there are a few shops. So I'm going to show you the different shops. So there's a general store here. So with a general store, you can buy seeds. So there's actually not too much point of like uh, going to that merchant over there for the seeds because you can get all of them here. And then you've got plenty of different furniture. And yeah, this one is pretty much the same every day. You've got tools, you've got more furniture and more seeds. So yeah, I like this store. There's a lot of stuff here. And then you've got the building store, which is uh, the one I go to the most. And this is where you can buy all the building materials. So you can buy roof tiles. And as you can see, so this one is a roof tile, right? So once again, if you try to use this roof tile to make a wall or a floor, it's not going to look right. So it's really just like for the roofs. Um, and yes, we've got plenty of different wood blocks here. You've got crafting station. So we're going to talk about the crafting in a minute. That's going to be our next point. Uh, you've got blueprints, lots of different floors. So these are the carpets, some fences. So yeah, lots of stuff. And here, as you can see, there's glass pane, metal bands, mortar, varnish, glue, varnish, cheap varnish, nails. So keep those in mind. And there's some more stuff here because now I'm going to be talking about their crafting, which is another thing that kind of bugged me a little bit with this game. So I'm just going to go to bed uh, since it's getting dark. All right. So as you can see, I've got a box here with everything that I've sold yesterday. So 1,475 petals. Okay. So now let's talk about the crafting. So there are six crafting stations in this game, unless I forgot one and it's just too much. So they all do different things. Uh, so let's take a look at different recipes. So for example, uh, here, let's take a look at the menu, by the way. So you've got the inventory here. You can see uh, all the different bugs and fish and fossils and art that you've collected. So it's nice that you can see that here. Here you've got achievements 
and here you've got your recipes so that's all the food that you can make in game but here's the crafting so for example if I want to make these light wooden planks I need a far lumber and two glue so that's the first thing that I don't like is just to make like a basic thing like a wooden plank you need an additional material which is the glue and you need to use the tiling station right so tile for lumber and two glue so basically how you're gonna do it is at first you need to make lumber so first uh, you need to get wood right so let's go chop some tree and the chopping trees is actually one thing I like in this game uh, because you just cut the base and then you get everything so that's a lot easier a lot faster than in Minecraft and actually that's because the physics in this game are a little bit different so you can't have just blocks hanging in the air so if you make a tower and or like a wall or anything and you break the blocks below everything's gonna fall down so just keep in mind that the physics are a little bit different so now you take your raw wood and you make lumber so you place them on the saw and then you gotta wait for your lumber to be ready so let's take our lumber and then you need to go in the tiling station for the wooden thing that we want to make so I've got my lumber here and I don't think I have any glue left let me just double check and that's one thing also for the storage um, you have to put everything on shelves so you can't have a chest so now I admit it is a little bit messy I should be a little bit more organized but everything has to be on shelves but I don't think I have any glue left so I'm just gonna go to the general um, uh, building store alright so the building store is here and I'm gonna buy glue so the glue is cheap uh, which is nice but it just feels like one unnecessary step alright so now I've got my glue you put it here and then you're gonna get the item here so light wooden wooden plank and then you've got the item and some items can be a little bit more complex so for example this one the bait box you need to carve items you need to use the carving station to make something and then you need to use the combining station for the second step so assemble carve so some most items you're gonna be able to make them with just two things but look at this the hardened axe like there are so many so many steps so many different materials but yeah it just feels tedious and a lot of times i'm just not gonna bother with crafting because yeah it's just too time consuming so most of the time i will just go to the building store and buy the materials directly from there however they can get a little bit expensive so currently i'm working on building this house right for that person and i still have not finished their roof so if I come here and I want to buy some roof, it's actually 50 petals, uh, petals the main currency, it's the money for 5 tiles, so that's actually not too bad. Some of them, some things are like 150 for 5, which is really a lot, so I feel like materials are kind of expensive. Either you go the expensive route and you buy everything, or you go the tedious, time-consuming route and you craft everything. Uh, also just keep in mind there is a creative mode in this game so if you just want to build uh, you can definitely play in creative mode and everything is going to be free so that's good to know however i feel like if you just like building and you want to build more than anything else i would actually recommend just playing minecraft because the building is a lot more fun and intuitive in minecraft i feel like than in this game um, and if you like farming i think the farming is pretty fun it's pretty simple in this game there's not any kind of complex mechanics or anything like that so if you're really into farming I would recommend be you'd better go with like story of seasons or stardew valley or if you're really like into minecrafty stuff I would recommend maybe you go with minecraft or actually a good game I would also recommend would be dragon quest builders 2 which is similar to this in many ways but I feel like it's better so I don't know I'm really enjoying this game but I feel like it's lacking in many aspects and here are the star bits the currency I was talking to you about earlier and if I go back there you're gonna see that the shop is actually gonna be selling different things so they've got some tables some chairs and yeah they've got lots of different things every day all right so now my next point as you can see there are people in town so these merchants you can't really interact with them they don't have anything to say but you've got these villagers 
Uh, sometimes they will give you quest. So this one doesn't have anything interesting to say. But sometimes they will tell you to bring them something or something like that. And you can see they also have a little heart icon. So there is a relationship system in this game. And most of the time to increase the relationships. Um, it's not really a matter of like giving gifts or talking with them every day. It's mostly doing quests for them. So whenever they do give you quests, just make sure you complete the quests. Uh, so currently if I look here, so these are the main storyline quests. If you look here, you've got the little fetch quest. So uh, this one wants a ball with fruit. This one wants a carrot cake. So that's going to help you with your relationship. And they're also going to give you some rewards. But most of the time, I don't know. I, I don't feel very attached to these characters. And there's no marriage system or anything like that. So um, there's not too much to their relationship. So if you're into... Building relationships and farming games. I'm not sure if that's the best. Oh, this one, Oscar says, I can't find my yellow bunny phone anywhere. What should I do? My life is ruined. I'll go look for it. Actually, I found that phone <laughs> a few days ago, quite early in the game. I'm not sure where I found it, but it was in my inventory. Uh, so <laughs> I was just keeping it on my shelf. So let me give it to him. You found my yellow bunny phone. Thank you. Thank you so much. What are you waiting for? Hand it over. And as you can see, I'm going to get some kind of a reward. Let me see what I get. So I got goals and I got an achievement. So let's... Um, so as you can see, I can place the goals somewhere. I've also got these fireworks. Uh, I've never tried them. I was waiting for you guys to try together. So that's how it looks like. Uh, maybe you should have waited until it was nighttime. But yeah, so one thing I do like about this game compared to Minecraft is that there are a lot of like decorative things which is something you don't have a lot in minecraft so like goals and like lots of like chairs and sofas and like a little dog house little post box uh these little crates so there are a lot of decorative items which is uh which is something pretty nice all right so now let's talk about how this game looks so i do think it looks quite cute my favorite part is definitely the villagers they're all quite detailed and they just look they just look very cute they all have their own unique style and the world is very colorful as well lots of flowers and like the textures the different blocks do look pretty good i have to say um the only thing that's kind of bothering me is that the view distance is very short so the graphics are at the max the highest settings right now uh but sometimes you really do have to get close to see the textures right if you go a little bit further away the textures are gonna get very blurry uh, so that's just one thing to keep in mind but yeah I do think it's a pretty cute game and you can also see the map with M and the world is actually infinite and there are different biomes the only thing is that I never found myself actually exploring like most of the time you'll have everything you need around town uh, sometimes you're gonna go to the ocean to do some fishing as you can see there's a little house there Maybe we can check that out But it's not like in Minecraft where you're really incentivized to go in the different biomes because there are different materials and things uh, You'll find most of the same things everywhere uh, But sometimes you can get things like this house here uh, So it has a bed and things I could maybe take some stuff from here and bring it to my place or something like that but yeah, it's it's a big world, but you're just not incentivized to really explore it, which is a shame. However, the world is only infinite in the original version of the game. On the CE version, which is the version you're gonna get on Switch, it is a bit different. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna jump on to the CE version and we're gonna compare the graphics and the other differences between the two versions all right so i'm now playing the ce version just keep in mind if you play on the steam version if you switch between the original and c the save files are actually different uh so i'm gonna play on a different save file right here so here's how it looks as you can see it is quite different in certain ways so let's start with the UI. So first you've got a proper kind of toolbar at the bottom here. And which is something that I liked. I wish it was like this in the original version as well. And the UI like at the top left, it is a little bit bigger where you see the date and your money and everything is a little bit bigger. 
and if you pause the game you've got everything here uh, you've got the character designer so this is also a little bit it looks a little bit better than with the original version of the game and your inventory as well everything is bigger everything looks better the menu for the achievement looks better um, everything is just clearer and bigger and I actually do enjoy this interface quite a lot more than the original one and I really gotta say I appreciate that they went through the extra mile of like rewriting the game and like redoing the whole interface for the Switch version of the game because a lot of times what we see when PC games are ported to Switch is that they don't change the UI at all and it just doesn't work because the UI is made for PC and the game is ported to Switch and I think the world is slightly um, different as well so for example this house right here Eris home uh, I don't think Eris is in my other save file so I don't know if it's because these villagers are random or if it's just like a few other differences and also as you can see the map is a lot smaller so the map is not infinite in this version of the game so you do still have all the different biomes uh, you do have the little house we saw earlier there's the beach the ocean there's like the tundra kind of area there's a mountain here so you do have everything you need uh, but just keep in mind it's not infinite so if you're planning to build a lot a lot of stuff or like big structures or you just like exploring uh, just keep that in mind that if you play the CE version, whether you play on Switch or you play on Steam, uh, it's not gonna be infinite. But I think it's not really a deal breaker because as I said, you don't really need that much space. So now let's talk about the graphics. So graphically, it is definitely a step down from the original version. It is a lighter version of the game made to run smoothly on the Switch and also on PC with lower performances. As you can see, the sky looks a little bit different. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it does look a little bit different. Uh, I feel like the grass is maybe not as detailed. The view distance is also quite shorter. And I'm not sure why. I'm, I'm not a big fan of this, but you can see these leaves falling from the trees. And they're falling from all the trees. So even though we're in spring and leaves shouldn't be falling from the trees that much, but all the trees have their leaves falling for some reason and I don't know if it's supposed to add to the atmosphere but I'm just not a big fan of this to be honest uh, but it is something as you can see there's a chimney there so there's some smoke and yeah so there are a few added details like this but other than that it is mostly the same thing I gotta say though I really really like this big mountain that you get in front of your farm it really gives you a beautiful view. Uh, yeah, so also this game is available in co-op. So if you want to play with your friends in multiplayer, you definitely can do that. Uh, so that's really good. So yeah, if you're planning to get this game and you're not sure whether you should get it on Steam or on Switch. And of course, if you're on Steam, uh, you're going to have to choose between the original or the CE version. Uh, these are the differences. So, oh, there's a little chest here. So with C you get a smaller world, but you get a better UI, but the graphics are not as good I feel like. Um, so these are the minor differences between the two versions. Also there is no combat in this game, I thought I wanted to point that out. So my final thoughts on this game, it is fun, I think it is worth the money. If you're looking for a new farming sim game, or if you really like Minecraft or Dragon Quest Builders and you want a similar experience, I would recommend it. It's something different, it's something new. However, I feel like if you can get Dragon Quest Builders and play that instead, or if you can get Minecraft and play that instead, uh, I think there are lots of great farming mods for Minecraft that you could download if you really want to have a, like a deeper, more complex farming experience. Um, and have the better like building features of Minecraft. Uh, I think that's something you could do. Uh, but I still think it's a fun game. Uh, it is cute. It is a it is a good time for sure. And the great thing with this is that it has a story mode. So if you don't like Minecraft because there's no story and you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, um, I think this might be a good option as well. So I hope that watching this video, guys, give you some idea of the game and you now know if you want to get it or not and you can make 
a good decision for yourself. If you guys have any questions about this game, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I read all the comments and I'll try to answer them. Also, if you have any tips and tricks for people who play this game, please leave them in the comments as well. And yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it. So please make sure to click like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And I'm gonna see you all in the next video.